I've been duped before and I have bought fakes before. I managed to get my money back, thank God, after being told they're the real thing. I'm not sure how much of it is an empty threat, but a lot of places are cracking down on counterfeit copyright goods, um, fake goods, and there in certain countries you can be fined up to 300,000 euros and face possible prison time. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So let's discuss the dangers of carrying fake goods when you're traveling through airports globally. I've got, I've, I've done digging. Okay, so if you are curious about this topic, whatever your stance on fakes, and I'm going to briefly explain my stance on fakes, whatever your stance is, I hope that you find this interesting, if nothing else. And if you are someone who carries fakes, whatever your reason, I know some of you have told me that you've bought super fakes because you don't want to waste the money on the real thing, you know, that kind of thing. Um, whatever your stance on is, you might be interested to know the information that I found out. And I've also gone on a massive hunt, I must have been looking for like over three hours yesterday, for information on people that this has actually happened to. Because I was thinking, it's all very well there being a law, but I want to see actual evidence of people who this has happened to. So keep watching for that because I have found some information. Um, I, I was digging around on forums. I found, I found stuff that I'm going to tell you about as well as a very interesting story to do with a fake Rolex. So keep watching for that. So my stance on fakes and I don't want to offend anyone. So if you're watching this and whatever your, the side of the fence you're on, I'm not trying to offend you. Everyone has their opinion on everything, you know, and this is just my opinion on this. I personally don't agree with fakes. I have done videos before where I have kind of lifted the lid on the criminality that fakes support. Uh, drug cartels, horrible stuff to do with kids like honestly look into it if you're watching this thinking oh it's just a fake Louis Vuitton how could that fund a drug cartel honestly look into it because it's not it's true this stuff can fund criminality um and of course you're going to have independent people who buy fakes and then resell them on but I'm actually talking about the the, the people producing this stuff and buying this stuff and selling it en masse I'm talking about that and I will link to that video below if you want to see more. But I don't agree with fakes. Um, I would personally carry a lesser or non-designer bag than carry a fake. Um, and in fact, when I was growing up, I was very much into designer bags. I was obsessed with, with designer bags, but I would rather carry a non-designer bag than a fake. And actually some of my favorite brands were, I used to have so many handbags from a place called River Island. They're still going now if you haven't heard of them because maybe you're not in the UK, check them out, they're really good. But also I used to carry loads of bags from, um, I really liked Juicy Couture. I know not everyone's into that brand, but I was a super fan when I was a lot younger. And I would, that was my motto, I would rather carry a really pretty non-designer bag than a fake one. But as I say, you do you. If you disagree, that's completely fine. And in this video, apart from that little bit there, I'm not actually gonna be getting into what I think about fakes. It's more gonna be the background about what could potentially happen to you if you get caught with one. So here's the background. Several years ago now, I can't even remember how many years ago this was, do you know that? But it was a while ago. In France and in Italy, at airports, posters were put up displaying information, letting people know that if they were caught with a counterfeit item, whether it was a bag, a watch, a pair of shoes, clothing, whatever, that that item would be taken off them. They would potentially be fined 300, up to 300,000 euros and they would potentially face prison time as well. And this was all part of a crackdown and a clampdown on the fake industry. Now, I have actually found some people talking online about this and I'm gonna go through their comments in a minute because what they've said is really interesting. But another example from somewhere much further away than, than Italy and France was actually in Atlanta, Georgia in the States. The Hartsfield Jackson International Airport documents a crackdown there. 
And I'm gonna link to my sources below because actually Perswap has got a really interesting post on this. So I'm gonna link to their content below. But customs there are cracking down on counterfeit goods. And it sounds in the States, like as opposed to getting a fine in prison time, the item will be taken from you. And I found it quite interesting because also when I was reading the purse bop um, article, they've managed to find photos from, I think it's Rome airport, where on display, as a warning to everyone, are a whole bunch of fake things on display in cabinets, warning that if you are caught with this kind of thing, you too will have it removed and God knows what else will happen to you. But it got me thinking, how can you spot a fake? Now, some fakes look really bad. Some fakes look really bad if you're used to the real thing. So for example, um, you might get someone who's bought a fake and to them it looks real but then you'll get someone who's got the same thing, the genuine version, and they can look at it and spot it and go, no, that's, that's not real. So you do, have, you do have assets and items which, which you would only know are fake if you've been up close and personal to the real thing. Then you've got fakes that look really, really fake. They look, they look really obvious. But then you have super fakes. And even I have read some experts in stores and boutiques can't detect a super fake. So when you've got a busy customs department in an airport, this really made me think, how can they possibly identify fakes? How can they do it? Because even if I think about some pre-loved consignment places that I use, they have got rigorous authentication processes where they look at the leather under microscope, literally. They look at serial numbers, that, and, it, and it's not a quick thing. To authenticate a bag with the places I'm talking about takes them a few days because they use experts that do it. You can't just walk through customs and have, have someone who's never been up close and personal potentially to the real thing, or maybe they have, look at something and necessarily be able to say categorically it's fake, particularly if it's a super fake. Things like watches. Very often, you have to take a watch apart and see the mechanics on the inside to know whether it's actually fake or not, unless it's like a really bad fake, or you know, you can judge it based on weight, etc. But again, you'd need some level of expertise to do that. So it looks as though in France, from the information I could find, that they have actually got trained professionals that do this. But then I got looking for examples of people that this had happened to. So I thought to myself, this is interesting. But has anyone actually been prosecuted? Now, if you know the answer, please let me know below. If you personally have had issues at the airport, particularly if you're carrying the real thing and you got done for carrying a, a, a counterfeit and it wasn't, it was the real thing, or if you were carrying a fake and you got done for it, please can you comment below? Because I've been unable on the internet, after over three hours searching, I've been unable to find anyone who has actually been prosecuted for this. Um, and so I would love it if you've heard of someone that this happened to, if it happened to you, if you saw on the news somewhere that this had happened, please let me know. But here are a couple of things that I found. So I went on, I was on a few different forums and I was on Quora, I think it's called, and what people are saying on there, and this is from one person who has said, in answer to the question, can you be done for carrying fake? It depends very much on the laws of the country you are entering. In the United States and in most other countries, there is no law against the possession of counterfeit goods or even purchasing them for personal use. It's unlikely you would get in trouble when entering the US with a single fake designer bag. You might, however, get in trouble if you try and send a counterfeit, counterfeit product through the mail. So that's interesting. I have seen on these shows in the UK where they show border force and customs, where they do random checks on um, packages being sent into the UK from other countries. And you, you see it, you see raids where they have um, confiscated like thousands of pounds worth of fake stock and then they go and destroy it you see it so would you be in more trouble for posting something than you actually would for 
for just carrying it on yourself. I'm not sure. There was also another comment that said that from this guy who said that he bought a Rolex from Beijing for £10. Customs asked me what I had purchased in China, so I showed him my wrist. The customs person said, we're not interested in fakes and waved him through. He then goes on to say that the strap broke on a mountain climb a couple of weeks later and it fell into a crevasse. But he said it did keep good time. <laughs> so there, we've got two people saying that actually, maybe outside of France and Italy, there are no categoric laws about this. So should you really worry or should you or should you not? I also found on a lot of forums people saying that the problem customs have is when you're carrying loads of fake stuff and it looks like you might be reselling it. That looks to be a problem, but carrying one fake item and it clearly is being used by yourself doesn't look like so much of an issue. Apparently, we don't know that. Now I'm gonna finish on quite an interesting little story time about someone I found who his wife bought him unknowingly a fake Rolex. And in this situation, if I bought David by accident, because she bought it on eBay, if I spent thousands of pounds on a watch for David and it turned out to be fake, I would actually cry. I, I would actually be sick. Um, it's one thing buying a fake. It's another thing buying a fake, thinking it's the real thing and being charged real genuine prices for it. But listen to this, quite an interesting story. So this is from a guy called Chris who used to work in a luxury uh, watch store. And he said, I can't speak for bags per se, but I did work in a fairly high-end watch and jewelry store for many years. And unfortunately had to tell people on a regular basis that their watches, most often Rolexes, were actually counterfeit. This was all too evident and frequent in the weeks just after Christmas every year, when people would come in with watches they had received as gifts. There was once an instance in particular that comes to mind. A gentleman came in to have his watch serviced as it had stopped working. His wife had purchased it for him on eBay, on the second hand market, and had spent quite a lot of money on this watch. This chap began to inspect the watch in order to de determine the problem. He says the first thing he did was remove the bracelet which let me see the model and serial number of the watch which is stamped between the lugs where the bracelet attaches. He goes on to say, even before doing this, I could not feel the telltale motion of the rotor of the automatic self-winding movement that Rolex is known for. So he, at this point, he's already thinking, I don't think this is real. And can you be, imagine being in that situation? How do you let a customer know, oh, actually, I'm really sorry, but you, what you've got isn't the real thing. You, that would be a very difficult situation to be in. He goes on to say that he suspected that possibly the rotor was stuck and the watch simply needed to be cleaned and serviced. So he's thinking, okay, I can't feel it, but maybe it's just broken. As soon as I unscrewed the back of the watch, it became very clear that it was counterfeit. The watch had a quartz movement and had a battery very clearly in it. He goes on to say, this model of Rolex was never produced with a quartz movement. The gentleman looked on and remarked, oh good, maybe it just needs a new battery. He goes on to say, I examined it to see maybe if it was an original Rolex with a quartz movement stuck in it, a common practice with thieves and counterfeiters. But the watch was made for this smaller movement. So what he's saying is, and I've heard this, a lot of counterfeiters will take elements of the real thing, bags, watches in particular, and they will mix in fake bits. So actually you've got a jumble of something that's got bits of the real thing and bits of something that's fake, but overall you're left with something that's fake. I set the watch down in front of the customer and retrieved a watch reference guide and turned to the page that showed the inner workings of his model watch and began to explain that this is what the watch should look like. As I was explaining, the man asked, why are you telling me this? To which I replied, someone has sold your wife a fake. I'm not sure what went through the man's head after I told him this, but judging from the look on his face, it was several emotions that included shock, anger, and disbelief. Now, what ended up happening is this gentleman said that several months later, well, he said he replaced the battery in the watch and it worked. 
but the watch was obviously fake. He said several months later, the, the customer went back into the shop and actually bought the real version of the watch his wife had bought him and said to the salesperson, when I come back in here in the future for servicing, etc., please can you never tell my wife or bring up the fact that that watch you saw was fake? Obviously he didn't want her knowing because she'd have been very upset. Um, I thought potentially maybe he bought the real thing so that he could get rid of the fake one and wear the real thing and his wife wouldn't know, but he knows he's got the real thing. Possibly, I don't know, that wasn't included in the story. But it really does make you think. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've been duped before and I have bought fakes before. I managed to get my money back, thank God. After being told they're the real thing and this is a whole side topic but it can be really really upsetting when you buy something thinking it's real and it turns up and you know immediately it's fake or it turns up and you don't even know it's fake and it's years later when you try and sell the thing or something that you're told unfortunately this is a fake item and the people winning here are the people selling this stuff but as you can see i couldn't actually find examples of a single person that has actually been prosecuted for this so if you know of any stories, if there is something that's happened to you, a friend, if you read something once, if you saw something on the news, if in your local country it's more common knowledge of people that, that get prosecuted for this, please let me know in the comments because I would be fascinated to know. Thank you all so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you now in the comments section.